Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Renato today analyzes a recent version of the Guildmower Astaroth uh, malware that uh, he came across. And well, it's remarkable in so far as it's using a fairly old Unix utility that's also found on Windows Finger. Finger in the past had been used in order to check on the status of remote users who is logged into a particular system and also which accounts exist. Given that the utility didn't really know any authentication and uh, wasn't really that terribly useful, it has since pretty much been forgotten. But apparently Currently, Windows still includes a finger client, and this latest version of Guildma is taking advantage of this by using this utility to retrieve additional commands. As so many information security stories, it starts with an email that contains a zip file as an attachment and instead of a PDF as promised, it includes a link file that's then being used to start finger.exe and retrieve additional commands from the attacker's command and control server. The reply from this finger command will then be used uh, to create a visual basic script and that is being executed to then download additional malware. Also taking advantage later of good old bits admin, which of course is often used to send HTTP requests and retrieve malicious binaries like in this case. So overall, a pretty neat use of sort of the living off the land techniques. Uh, Bits admin, of course, has been used uh, quite often for that. Uh, Finger is a little bit of a new way of starting it all off. As far as preventive or detective measures go, take a look for connections to and from port 79. That's the port used by Finger by default. And I believe it's safe to just remove that executable from your Windows systems. And researchers at the University of Luxembourg, as well as Royal Holloway University of London, have come up with some neat tricks how ransomware could bypass popular protection methods in anti-malware. The main feature they are targeting here is protected folders. This refers to a feature where only specific software is allowed to access files inside these protected folders. So the idea is that if the user launches ransomware, that the ransomware is not allowed to access these folders or files inside these folders. So it's not able to exfiltrate the data and particularly not able to encrypt those files. These researchers found two different methods in order to bypass uh, these security controls. The first method is uh, to essentially use software that is authorized to access these folders to essentially do the encryption for them or to at least modify the files. And the way they have accomplished that and uh, that allowed them to bypass the anti-malware control is to launch software like, for example, a notepad and then to control the software with simulated mouse movement and mouse clicks. So for example, the attacker's software would use Notepad to open the file, then use copy-paste to copy the content of the file to the malicious process, then later paste the encrypted version of the data back and save the file. Using similar techniques of uh, controlling mouse clicks and mouse movements, they were also able to disable the protection mechanisms of some anti-malware. Let me got a couple of updates to web browsers. Uh, Firefox, first of all, released a new update. That's Firefox 89 or the extended support release 78.11.0. This version fixes a vulnerability that would allow a malicious site to steal stored passwords. The way this typically works is by confusing the browser as to which site it's visiting. The browser 
will then autofill usernames and passwords for the wrong site, which the site the information is being pasted into is able then to steal. And Microsoft announced that starting with Microsoft Edge 92, Microsoft will offer a automatic HTTPS feature, which will make HTTPS the default protocol. So your browser will first try to connect to HTTPS and only if it can't connect will offer HTTP. This will be disabled by default in Microsoft Edge 92. So you will have to enable this. It's essentially sort of a little uh, preview feature, but it's expected to become the default in the future. And well, it looks like that this is of the behavior that the browsers are now going for. So over the next couple of months, you'll probably see this across all kinds of different browsers. Well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening. And if you have any questions or any comments, uh, please uh, let me know. You can always use uh, the Storm Center's contact page or just uh, ping me on Twitter or some other social media. That's it. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.